Welcome to Rise Up New England. It is my honor to introduce to you Dr. Michael Youssef. William Pynchon established Springfield in 1636 at the junction of the Agawam and Connecticut rivers, and it officially became a city in May of 1852. Springfield is an important landmark in Massachusetts and New England, which is also the birthplace of the Great Awakenings, with leaders such as D.L. Moody, Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, and Charles Finney. These revivals brought churches together in unity under one banner, redemption found only in Jesus Christ. Today, however, because of divisions amongst churches and denominations, many of these churches are now divided. Springfield, Massachusetts was the most unchurched city in America. That is astounding because there's churches everywhere. The church, the community, the region needs revival. If you look at especially Massachusetts, everything really started, some of the greatest revivals in the history of our nation started right here in Massachusetts. So if it started here, it's gotta come back. Somebody has to break the barriers. Somebody has to go and be that one and be that voice. Now it's the time to rise up. It is a time to awake the sleeping giant, which are the churches of New England, and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ once again. I believe that God is raising up all the states in New England to rise up and be a, a, a guiding light, a shining uh, beacon, if you will, for the, not only our region, but also the United States of America and around the world. I believe that Rise Up New England will change um, us being the most unchurched as we have known to be. We're seeing what I consider to be kind of the ripple effect of revival. To have a ministry like Leading the Way fix their eyes on what God is doing here and to come alongside uh, the local body of believers is, it's overwhelming, it's humbling, it's exciting. I, I feel joy when I see multiple churches and peoples, all denominations, all in one place, ready to worship. I am so excited for Rise New England and everything that's happening in our city. And I came here today because I believe that all of us together are able to impact the city better. So it doesn't matter what church we're coming from, we're just coming together to lift up the name of Jesus. I watch Yusuf on TV. And then when I heard that he was coming, I said to my wife, we got to go out there, and I hope that God gives them many, many more years to, to spread the good news and to bring more people into his kingdom. So what we're hoping to get is a revival in the heart, a word from God, for God's heart to be heard. I'm praying hard and long, so this would be the spark that will ignite the third great awakening in New England. Welcome to Rise Up New England, a leading the way evangelistic celebration in Massachusetts. Dr. Michael Youssef has returned to New England to share a life-changing message with thousands gathered at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. And now, let's join Dr. Youssef in Springfield, Massachusetts. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Springfield. Good to be here. And now you've heard this said many times, love is love, right? Well, you've heard it, I've heard it, but is it really true? You know, most of the love that you hear on television and movies is selfish at best. When an actor or actress says, uh, baby, I need you. Baby, I can't live without you. Uh, oh, baby, I, I, I. You know what he or she is saying? I love me, and I want you to love me too. <laughs> that, that's basically about the love that they talk about. But I came all the way here to tell you about a unique, exceptional, 
and selfless love of God. Jesus tells us that when God loved, He gave. He didn't take, He gave. Jesus, who came from heaven to show us the true love of God, He told us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, Jesus, so that whoever believes in Him shall never perish, shall never die, but have everlasting life. It is not selfish love, it is selfless love. It is the love that He has for you is not an occasional love, but it is a permanent love. It is not conditional love, but it is unconditional love. It is not partial love, but it is a complete love. God's love for you is not depending on what you do, on, but on whether you receive it and accept it or not. The truth is, John 3.16 is very familiar. I know even people outside of the churches and outside of the Christian faith, they know John 3.16. But it is the summary of the Christian faith. John 3.16 is what the Christian faith is all about. And that is what sets the Christian faith apart. And I've studied them all. We love everybody. We love people of all religions. But what sets the Christian faith apart is John 3.16. For God so loved humanity that He gave His one and only Son to die for you so that you may have eternal life. This is the essence of the Christian faith. Jesus, when He made this declaration, He was saying it to after He told a religious leader, one of the hierarchies of the religion of Judaism, after He said to Nicodemus, He said, you must be born again. And immediately he said to him, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so whoever believes in him shall not perish. Why did he do that? Because no religion or religious system that can save us. Because there is no religion or religious system that can truly deliver us and give us peace and joy in this life. No religious system that can absolutely assure us of heaven with Jesus for all of eternity, but Jesus can. Only when you surrender to His inexplicable love can you be rescued from the abyss. Only in receiving His extravagant love can we be saved. Only by accepting His amazing grace can we be redeemed? But probably some of you are thinking, that's too good to be true, right? And it sounds too good to be true. How can a holy God, a righteous God, a sinless God, love us so extravagantly like this when we are not even having time for Him? Let me explain it this way. You and I, and every human being on the face of the earth, we are all born into a death row. Every human being we're born, every one of us, with an eternal death sentence hanging around our necks. Every human being has inherited the rebellious genes that we inherited from our first parents. And no one to rescue us. No one to rescue us. There was no one to set us free from death row. No one to set us free from this death sentence. There's one to deliver us from this awaiting judgment. Oh, but God Himself, the holy God, the righteous God, the God who created the universe, He came down to earth in order to set us free. He took our death sentence on Himself on the cross, and He says, I can set you free. When you come to Me, I'll set you free. You can be totally forgiven of all your sins, past, present, and future. You can accept my payment for your death as my death on that cross. Now, I'm here thinking that some of you probably, you don't believe your ears. Can I just come, confess my sins, ask God to forgive me, and I'm forgiven? Some might never refuse to accept that. I think it's just hocus-pocus. That doesn't make sense. That I can escape death row? Yes. 
I'm here to tell you tonight, it is absolutely true. The judge of the universe has paid in full to set you free. Free from addiction, depression, sorrow and sadness. Free from guilt and sin and pain. Free from eternal sentence. Free from all of the punishment of sin that goes with sin. And Jesus took all of our sin upon His sinless body on that cross. That's what you call the great exchange, the great exchange. He took all of our bad, and He gave us all of His good. Praise God. His love gave. His love sacrificed. His life took all of the bad and gave us all of the good. Far from being indifferent and aloof and killjoy and vindictive. Our God is far from that. Our God is the most loving person you'll ever know in your life. And He loved, not just in words, but in action, by sacrificing. I think any father in this room, or mother for that matter, really, would understand what I'm going to tell you. I'm privileged to be father of four and grandfather of 14, soon to be 15. But every father and every mother in the room will understand what I'm going to tell you. I would rather suffer and die a thousand deaths than watch my son suffer. Amen? Now you multiply this a million times, and you get close to getting the picture of how God the Father suffered as He watched His Son, God the Son, carrying your sin and mine on His holy sinless body on the cross. God the Father sacrificed everything. He gave His all when He gave His one and only Son. That's the kind of loving God that I'm inviting you to come to Him tonight. That's the kind of loving God. He's inviting you to come tonight. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son so that whomsoever believes in Him, trust in Him, surrender to Him, receive Him as the only Savior and Lord, will receive eternal life tonight. I tell people when believer dies, I said eternal life did not just begin when they closed their eyes in death. Eternal life for the believer starts the day they said yes to Jesus. He sacrificed His one and only Son. Oh, but also, the Son, the Bible said, willingly. Jesus said, I have authority to lay it down. I have authority. Now. I choose to lay my life for you and you and you and me. Here is the absolute truth. Listen carefully. Not everyone, this tears me up, it really does. Not everyone whom God loves will accept His free gift of salvation and eternal life. But listen, that does not change God's love. That does not change God's love. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son so that whomsoever, whomsoever, that's you and you and you, whomsoever, only whomsoever comes to Him will receive all of the benefits of His love. Salvation may be free to you, free to me, but it cost God a colossal price. It cost Him His one and only Son who coexisted in the Godhead since before eternity began. It cost Him the shedding of the precious sinless blood of Jesus on that cross. It cost Him the pain of carrying your sin and mine on His sinless holy body. It cost Him the pain of carrying the shame of hanging on that cross naked. The Bible said, that the perfect and sinless one 
was made sin for us. Why? Because He took your place, and He took my place. He took your place. He took your place on that cross. You know, I remember only too well, before I came to Christ and repentance and seeking forgiveness and strength, I remember too well. Every time my conscience troubles me, because make no mistake about it, whether you know Jesus or not, you have a conscience, and God speaks to your conscience. And my conscience would, the pangs of guilt and pain and shame, and I know that I'm a sinner, I know that I'm guilty, and yet every time I failed, I would say to myself, I promise myself that I'm going to do better in the future. I'm going to improve in the future. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to reform my life. And every time, the sooner I say that, the sooner I fail again. Until I came to Christ on that amazing night, on a Wednesday night on March 4th, 1964, when I came to Christ receiving His gift of salvation, eternal life, until His Holy Spirit came to dwell on the inside of me, until His power came to rest on me and give me strength, only then could I experience power and strength. Now, for all these years, I have been spending my years just thanking the Lord for what He did in my life, thanking Him, expressing gratitude. And I'm so glad that I'm going to spend all of eternity in heaven thanking Him. This is the greatest news of all. It's the greatest news of all. God's Word said that you could have gained all of the wealth of the world, but it would not compare to few seconds of eternity in torment. The Bible said, the Scripture is very clear, what shall profit a man? What shall profit a woman? What shall profit anybody if they gain the whole world and lose their soul? None. None. I know that in the midst of our confused culture, in the midst of our canceled culture, in the midst of our disturbed and broken culture, we have distorted view of God. I know that. It breaks my heart, but I am going around the world trying to correct those views. <laughs> we really do. But what Jesus is telling us here in John 3, 16, it's very familiar, as I said, that God's giving is His nature. That's His nature. Why? Because His love is His essence. His love is His essence. Hear me right, please. Do not listen to people and what they say about God. Listen to what God said about Himself. And God loved us when we were unlovable. God loved us when we were at enmity with Him. God loved us when we hated Him. God loved us when we were filled with pride and arrogance. And God loved us when we took all of His blessings for granted and never gave Him thanks for it. And that is why the next two verses, after John 3, 16, 17 and 18, the next two verses, again, I'm not going to prolong this, but listen carefully. Listen to what Jesus said. For God did not send His Son to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him, whoever surrenders to Him, whoever humbles themselves before Him, will not be condemned. Will not be condemned. Oh, but whosoever rejects Him, they got themselves condemned. God didn't condemn them. They condemned themselves. Whoever rejects Him stands condemned already. The choice is yours. The decision is yours. The verdict is yours. Think about this. John 3, 16. Think about it with me. Just go through it word for word. God, the greatest lover, so loved the greatest degree 
the world the greatest number, that He gave the greatest act, His one and only Son the greatest gift, believe the greatest simplicity, in Him the greatest person, shall not perish the greatest deliverance, but have the greatest certainty, eternal life the greatest position. One last question. Where does that incomprehensible love came from? It did not come from outside of Him. It came from inside of Him, from the inside of Him. God loved us because it is His nature to love, so much so that the Bible chooses the smallest word in the English language, so. God so, can you say that word with me? So loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. My friends, I want to tell you this. God is not reluctant to forgive you. He's anxious to forgive you. He's anxious to receive you. In John 3.16, He tells us that He will remove all condemnation all condemnation when you come to Him. And tonight, you can see the signs everywhere you look. All is forgiving. All is forgiven. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home to the Father. Will you stand up with me, please? I want everybody that God spoke to you, if the Holy Spirit spoke to you, I want you to get out of your seat and come down here so I can pray with you and help you along the way. There will be people here to help you in every way they can. Come. Come. Take your time. Come down. Come down. Come down. Come. Come. Keep on coming even though we pray, but keep on coming. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Don't be delayed. You're going to hear a voice that says, not now, not now. Say, no, the day is now. The hour is now. The time is now. We cannot guarantee the next hour, but God can guarantee it for you to be in heaven with Him. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these precious, precious brothers and sisters. I pray, Father God, as they turn to you in faith, as they turn to you in repentance, Father, I thank you that your promise is that you will forgive them and that you will restore them and that you will give them a new life in Christ. I pray for strength from above, strength that can only come from the Holy Spirit. Father, that they will walk in the newness of life. Now I pray that everyone here who does not have a church find a home church and be part of it as they grow in you. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said, praise the Lord. When I think about tonight, when I think about the collaboration and the diversity, to me, that's one of the things that sticks out. And just to see people from different walks of life, different denominations, Christians bring their lost friends and loved ones to be a part of this. The whole atmosphere in the room was just like, it was so like palpable. It was beautiful. So just seeing like, how people just engaged in worship and just sang out and all together in one voice. You, you had to be there. I met a few people, but uh, specifically one gentleman. He just wanted to rededicate his life to the Lord. We went through the prayer of salvation. You know, he really felt like fire burning inside of him at that point. I was able to minister to a mom and a son. She had come back to Christ and he received Jesus as his savior. So it was a win-win. When I first heard of Dr. Youssef coming with Rise Up New England, I was tremendously excited and encouraged. I've been told that Springfield is one of the least evangelized cities in the country. So the event unified many people and brought many churches together. To have an event like this was just an amazing time, not only to reach the lost, but even for the believers that are here. What I appreciated most about Pastor Youssef's preaching was 
his enthusiasm for the Word of God and for people. I know that something started here tonight and that lives were changed. Their friends are going to notice a difference. I can't see how that can't impact a community. For God so loved humanity that he gave his one and only son to die for you so that you might have eternal life. I just want to thank Dr. Youssef for being obedient to God's call over his life because ultimately it makes an eternal difference. You could feel the Holy Spirit moving through him. Hearing him preach, Michael Youssef, it's just so cool. It just reignites something all over again. Preaching the simple message of salvation and seeing people come to Christ, I think that's the joy of the Christian life. You've been watching Rise Up New England, where thousands received and responded to the life-saving truth of the gospel. Thank you for joining us today for this special presentation of Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Youssef. Check out Leading the Way's smartphone app, with the Leading the Way app, you can watch recent episodes of Leading the Way, listen to sermon series, as well as read special daily devotionals written by Dr. Yusuf. You can even watch Leading the Way live events on your mobile device. Just search for Leading the Way on your Apple, Android, or Amazon Fire device to download the app today. passionately proclaiming uncompromising truth, leading the way with Dr. Michael Yusuf. Thanks you for your faithful support through your continued prayers and gifts.